What is up, you guys, and welcome to the Basement Dwellers Podcast. This is episode one. I have a special guest. His name is Trace Arnlin. He's one of my best, if not my brother, if not a family member that's not blood related, which is okay, you know, because you have people like that in your life. But I decided that he will be the first guest on my first episode. So, how's life been? How's it been, you know, being a dad, actually? That's pretty, that's, to me, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Honestly. Um, well, I never planned to be one. I always said that I wouldn't be, but it's actually everything opposite of what I expected it to be because I figured it would be just, like, constantly being like controlled and not really having any type of freedom or being able to do anything but it's dope it's like you get to live the life that you lived before a kid but you just got a little buddy with you so and plus my kid's the coolest so (laughs) i remember i remember like years ago when we would be talking about like oh when we're grown we're not gonna have any kids we're just gonna be just you know just kind of like fucking around and stuff but yeah uh, shit happens right (laughs) It does. But, hey, to be honest, though, like, I don't know what it's like to be a parent because I don't have, like, a kid. I have two dogs that I've raised since they were puppies. So we can kind of, in a certain I, in a certain correlation or whatever, we can kind of relate in a way. But I guess it's, like, it may be a little harder to raise a human being than a puppy. Would you agree? It is. You won't be able to understand what it's like to be a parent until you become one. Because I was always told that. They're, like, my mom always said, too, she's, like, you know. The love you have for parents, siblings, friends, a uh, significant other, pets, teachers, whatever, anything. She's like, it's not a love that you can understand until you actually have one. So it's dope, though. So, like, since you, you know, since you've had your child, like, has that been more motivation for you to keep going forward with your music, or? Have you always had that motivation even, like, before, you know, your child was brought into the world? Well, yeah, I've I've never, like, losing my uncle there for a little bit, I lost it. Because I lost all my recordings at the same time. But I've never really, like, lost a drive. I've always just stayed focused and known, known exactly what I want in life. And it's always been, that's been, like, my only dream, so... Um, but having her definitely helped push it up a little bit more. Like it gives me a sense of purpose and I'm not even, I'm not a, uh, like I've never felt either like, Oh, I don't have any purpose on this earth, da, da, da. but if I did, then she would definitely take that away too, because it just, you, you feel a whole new sense of like purpose and drive and I don't know, it's, it's it's a feeling that it's dope. It's dope. I feel like when you're young, you, f- you have all these dreams and aspirations and stuff, and then as you get older, a lot of people lose that dream. But it's like the inspiration and positive outlook you have on life as a kid before you realize what reality is. Having a kid gives me that outlook on life again. Like I look at shit in a way more positive way because... It's, you know, having hers is dope. It brings a whole new light to life that I may not have had before. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a good way of putting it, you know, because, like, you know, some people will just have kids just for the sake of just, you know, having a kid just to pass on their legacy or their bloodline or whatever, yeah. you know, and some, pe- and some people aren't, like, you know, fit to be a parent and some people aren't ready. But in your case, like, for sure. you know, like, your kid wasn't planned, but... Even after you, you know, even after your child was born, like, it's like you fit in, like, you fit into the father figure so perfectly, like, not saying that, like, you know, you knew what you were doing at first, but it it was, it was like instinct kicked in, like, you knew what you were supposed to do, you were always there for your child, Yeah, well, always taking care. I didn't know off top, but I picked up on routine quickly, I picked up on what all needed to be done, and... Stuff like that because my mom is, you know, she's the shit. She instilled in me what I feel like all parents should instill in their kids, which is like, you know, 
love and oh, just like she, like she she definitely raised me right, basically. So it wasn't like I was the type that was like, oh, you know, I don't know what the hell I'm doing or I'm not fit to be a parent. Like I've got I've got it in me and. I told her and I tell everybody else I plan on being the best dad that there is, so. I mean, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure at times it's, you know, kind of hard or, like, kind of, like, you know, there's times where you probably don't get enough sleep at night, you know? Uh, the first two months. The first two the months? first two months are the worst. How and old is your child? She's six months. Oh, you know? Jesus, man. She was born April 6th. I feel like I feel like she was just I feel like she was just born like two weeks ago. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, <sighs> man, she's like I don't have any other kids besides her, so I don't have any prior experience to be able to base how she is as opposed to like another kid. But mom obviously has three and has has helped raise a ton of kids, so she's got plenty of experience to be able to say. And she said she was like. Your kid, she was like, you got so lucky. Your kid is like one of the most well-behaved kids because besides those first two months where she was waking up every two hours or so, um, she does not cry at all unless she's like starving, tired, or, you know, stuff like, like she doesn't really get fussy. She's, she's the coolest. She's like, you know, go with the flow, put her in the car put on some music, get the car rolling, and she, she's chill, like, we, come, coming from Illinois, that was like, that was like a six and a half hour drive to get here, she ain't fussed the whole time, that's we, crazy, we stopped halfway through, changed her diaper and stuff, like, she's, she's chilling, that's crazy, because like, you know, like, some kids, especially, like, when a parent is like, you know, on like a long road trip, maybe six hours, maybe even like, if, you know, like, from Lexington to... Florida is like what, like a 13, 12 hour drive. Mm-hmm. I'm not like a hundred percent sure on that, but I know it's longer than six hours. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a really actually, if I'm not mistaken, because I, I did go to Destin, Florida with my neighbors. Um, oh man, that was like 10 years ago. That was like, I think a little bit that was way before I met you because Spencer had just moved in with us. He had his long hair, he had that like duct taped, <laughs> he had that know, duct tape. <laughs> Spencer lived with you before I met Dude, you. he lived with us for like almost three years. Before and I it's, met you? Yeah. yeah. It, dude, it's the funniest. Actually, I think it was... Actually, no. It was a little after I met you. It wasn't it maybe like a year after I met you. Maybe two years after I met you. I'm not 100% sure. But I That's do remember... I was going to say. I don't... But I, I do remember that. it was like around that time. Yeah. So, but like... Like 2013-ish, maybe. Some... It, Maybe 20, somewhere around we there. Met in 2012, so. Yeah, like maybe like a year after, maybe two years after. But I'll never forget because like Sammy was working with him at Kroger, and uh, him and his uh, I guess you know the place he was living at, the people who were living there, they kind of got into it, yeah. and uh, he got kicked out, and so he had nowhere to live. And this was around the time you remember. Yeah, I did. I did know you back then because we had those neighbors that were throwing them fucking house parties next uh-huh. door. And I remember you walked out to move your car, yeah. and the dude ran out in the towel because his two puppies ran up on you. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So those Avery's people. Yeah, he uh, he started living with us, and like the next morning when Sammy brought him here, like the night that he brought him here, the next morning he went to go use the bathroom, and my dad woke up, and he was like, who the fuck are you? And my dad was about to fight him, <laughs> and Sammy woke up, and he was like, yo, yo, that's just somebody that I brought from work. You know, he had nowhere else to stay. So my dad kicked them both the fuck out, and my mom <laughs> and my, my mom was in Dubai at the time, and then uh, when she came back the first time, when she came back... Uh, so wait, she, Spencer, Spencer's originally Sammy's friend before yours? Yeah, but me and him grew closer. I don't yeah, know how. You, That's so weird, isn't it? That's even, so fucking I, weird. I've never even seen Sammy and Spencer really, like, chill like that. I don't think right? I that right? Was I, mean, I mean, they're cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're close and everything. You know, they're like, you know, like brothers just like me and you are, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just like me and him are, but... It's like the majority, like the majority of the time that he stayed here with me, you know, when he stayed here with us, like, you know, he was always chilling in my room with me. Just, you know, me and him would play games together, watch movies. Me and him would like, dude, there, I have a funny story. Like me and him, remember when we drove by Baskin Robbins the other day over there by uh, Malone's over by Drake's? I remember and you were like, oh, what the fuck is this still doing here? Remember yeah, that childhood that memories? Was, yeah. 
one day, like, we had just got off work, because he used to go in, we ended up, like, he quit Kroger, and then I was working at that nursing home, you you remember that place, I was working there for the longest, I got him a job there, me and him would go in at the same time there, you know, from, like, you know, like, 6 in the morning till about, you know, 2.30, and I remember one of those days when we got off work, it was, like, almost, like, 8 o'clock at night, and, you know, back then, he, his, his moped was held together with duct tape, so that, dude that was literally that was literally like death on wheels you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying so lady lay down shut up so that was basically like death like that was like death on wheels and so yeah. it like i was kind of scared because like when like when you were on that moped riding the seat that you were sitting on was duct tape and it was barely put it was like barely like together yes so I'll never forget. We drove on a busted ass moped that was barely put together with fucking duct tape to Baskin Robbins. We got ice cream, brought some back for my mom. But like, it's just crazy, man. Cause like he went from being he went from being like a friend and someone that we took in to like being family. So like you know every time he gets time off, you know you know because he went from being in the Marines and now he's in the Army. Yeah. And, like, now, like, when he has time, he comes and visits us, like, every holiday. You know, like, Christmas, sometimes if he can, Thanksgiving, New Year's if he can, you know. Yeah. He's actually about to be a dad, too. His kid is almost here. Yeah, that's crazy. Everybody that I know, you, um, you know who I'm not going to mention because, you know, I don't have the permission to say their name on here. Uh, oh. ep- you know. That's not Spencer? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, so... <laughs> every like everyone except for me has kids or has a kid on the way and i'm yeah. like uh, but you know i don't look at it like i don't look at it as a bad thing because i feel like that's kind of like the universe's way of telling me and god's way of telling me like you know that you're a virgin no. <laughs> <laughs> yes that too even though i'm not but it's okay to make fun of me whatever but <laughs> It's just like a way, I guess, of like the universe and God just telling me it's not like it's not your time yet to be a dad. Like you're not ready. Yeah. Because I'm not like where I want to be in life just yet. You know. And we we you have plenty of time. Have one until you have the right woman to make one with and your life in order. Until you're until you're in a physical, financial, mental place to have one. Yeah. Then don't have one until you are. That's I guess my... I guess I was in in that state already and just didn't know it, but you know I think um, I think my life had come to a point where it's like you know, I always said that that had I had her any sooner it probably wouldn't have gone as smooth. But she came at she came at that the most perfect time. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I kind of hate to bring it up, but the both of us, man, we've had like a lot of losses. Yeah. You know. And, you know, to be honest, like loss, you know, in a way, in my opinion, I don't know like how you look at it. You know, we've had we we already had this conversation today, but I feel like it's kind of good to talk on here just, you know, just in case whoever's listening, you know, just in case, you know, you feel like you're alone and, you know, no one can relate, you know, me and Trace can relate. But like everyone deals with loss in like a different way. You know what I mean? Like me and you dealt with it a different way. We, you know, we've had friends, family members that we've lost that we never thought we would. And, it, you know, it yeah. just happens because it's life, you know. And I feel like in a way that's, I feel like in a way that's like a test, you know, a test in a way, you know, that's like, um, that's, that's like trying to like, you know, test you and see how far and how much can you take until you completely lose your mind. Because... Yeah. I have seen it's not it's not people that I know. Well, as they always say, um, when you lose people, it either will kill, like kill you or make you stronger. Or the whole phrase "what don't kill me makes me stronger." It's true. It's either there's only two things that come from it. You either get stronger from it, get wiser from it, or it completely breaks you. So, yeah, I've seen like you know, like with me for example, you know, when I lost my dad, you know, you know, R.I.P. to him. Like, I was in a dark place. I was like, oh my God, like, and I'm so, like, I'm just so thankful and I'm so glad that I was, like, in a way able to pull my, pull myself out of it before it got worse because had I not done that, 
like I feel like I feel like I would have been like that for you would have gone down that spiral into it until until Just I would have been gone of, yeah, yeah until yeah. like I would have been gone you know but I kind of had like I had a day where you know I'm gonna be honest like when I lost my dad it was like the most traumatic experience I've ever had in my life it was like the most heart-wrenching thing to ever experience like you know you can lose a friend you know you can lose like a dog you can you know like a pet you know like a fish or a frog or whatever yeah it hurts it sucks but when you lose someone that you've seen every single day of your life since Mm -hmm. you were a kid Mm -hmm. and like that's your dad and you you know he brought you into this world along with your you know your mother raised you did the best that he could you know respect you know respected you as a man you know what i mean you guys connected you guys were close when you lose someone like that a part of you is buried with them in that coffin and you'll never see that part of you ever again as messed up as that may sound as to some people as ignorant as that may sound no, it's that's true. true yeah anybody that that's been there can relate can understand even a friend like even like even like when i was Spencer was living with us at the time, you know, the, and the, God, the, I even knew you because I remember telling you this, but yeah. like, you know, when I lost, thank you, when I lost, um, you know, when I lost my friend Dino that I've known since I was a kid, God, man, the way that he went out was fucked up. Yeah. Like, that was like my, and Ashton too, and, you know, when I, and when I was in high school, when I lost her, you know, that just when i kept losing people i started to just like kind of get numb to it i started just to kind of you know just be like when i would hear someone that i knew passed away i'd be like oh okay you know i had no like i With had me it got to a point where it was like i wasn't numb to it it was just i became like paranoid like who's gonna go next people are just gonna keep going left and right left and right and it was almost like i thought that i would be numb to it but every time that it's somebody that you really were close with it that you care about it hurts just as much every time it's just like wow but it's like i was saying like either like get stronger from it or it breaks you i just always try to think like what's what do people say you didn't come this far to only come this far you didn't you didn't you know or what is it you survived 100 percent of your bad days so it's like you just that's all you can do is just push you just, just gotta push, push through. Push, yeah. You just gotta push through because I'll never, I'll never forget like watching. I know this may sound a little corny to some people, but like I'm a huge Rocky Balboa fan. I watched every movie, loved every movie, even if they were bad. I liked them just because of the fact that there was always a message. But I'll never forget mm-hmm. in Rocky Balboa, which is like Rocky Six. You know, he's old. He has a son that's full grown. You know, his son, you know, is having like good things going for him and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But. You know, he starts to box again, and, like, his son feels like he's taking something away from him because when he wasn't boxing, everyone was paying attention to his son, and his son was getting, you know, kind of like, you know, I'm not saying his son was getting the light, the glory, or whatever, but, you know, like, people were giving him a chance, not just because he was his son. Yeah. And then I'll never forget this one scene in the movie because the son gets mad at him because he's, you know, he's coming out of retirement to box this guy who's been talking trash about him. And he says to him, nobody will ever hit you harder than life. (laughs) Life will beat you down to your knees if you let it. No punch, nothing, no punch, no kick. You know, I do, you know, I do mixed martial arts. The shit hurts when you get hit hard in like a very, you know, like a, you know, obviously a very um, sensitive part of your body, you know, but he was saying no punch, nothing is going to hit you hard in life. It will beat you down to your knees if you let it. And a lot of people get to that point in their life and they let themselves get beat down and they don't get up because they just don't have that drive they just don't have that you know what i mean they just don't have like i'm not saying they don't have courage you know because that kind of like you have to get through adversity you have to get through what you're going through you have to get through the hard shit you have to you have to Mm -hmm. or else you're just going to be in like in a sunken dark depressing place for the rest of your life and there's a lot of people like that that just kind of just like sink into that place and they don't yeah. get themselves out of that place because they're stuck there you know we're all going to go through loss we're all going to go through shit that we're not going to be able to control but at the same time we have to realize maybe those people that we've lost they're probably a lot happier where they're at now than we are right now especially 2020 with everything going on with this virus going on with 
the way that the world is going on, with the way that, you know, people are acting with everything going on. Like, it's a lot of chaos, man. And I feel like a lot of our loved ones that we've lost, you know, probably, you know, would have not wanted to see this. And in yeah, a way, yeah, for sure, you for know, sure. you know, in a way, to be honest, I'm glad, you know, it may sound fucked up, but I'm glad that my dad's not here to see this shit. Because yeah. it's just what it... This raining rain. Yeah, I think I think uh I think people that um go through stuff or I don't know how am I saying this. I think the people that not all of them but most people that are not here it was probably better off like that or they didn't want to be here. At least in my personal experience there's a lot of people I know that passed that though all out of all those people that passed they had their issues or or you know they weren't as happy as some other people that i know and even though i don't agree with this statement how they say everything happens for a reason whatever it's it's not up for us to know so yeah i just um i just uh to try to try to use that as motivation to be like you know continue to thrive and go far in life for them because I know that that's what they would want and with your dad with people that I knew just anybody they wouldn't want to see us that's one of the main things I always try to think about is they wouldn't want to see us just get so sad over them and throw away our lives they they would be you know I'm 100% positive that if you could hear any of your uh, loved lost ones or I could hear any of mine that's all of them would be saying the same thing it'd be like nah keep going keep going we're fine keep going so I uh just use that as motivation to make sure that I make something out of myself yeah that, I mean that's a really uh that's a really positive and good way to look at it because you know not like when people get to that breaking point they just you know they just want to give up they just don't care no more. Like, they feel like the world is over. They feel like it's, you know, they've lost so many people. They've, like, lost so many people. They've been through so many hard times, you know. They've been through so much adversity. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the better their life gets, something even worse always comes along. And then they have to fight through that again. It's, you know, you know it's like another fight. Yeah. It's another fight that they have to go through. And it what sucks. Did, um... It fucking sucks. What did Lloyd Banks say in his song? He was like, um, on some song, he was talking about he loses, he would lose somebody every time he would he would leave out on a tour. He would like, you know, every time I'm going on tour, somebody's dying. That's got to be even more fucked up because I know, especially back in the day, they they toured like extensively. So, but um, I don't know. Enough enough of of that subject. <laughs> Yeah, I I just feel like, you know, I just feel like it's kind of good to, you know, just talk about that to kind of just get it off our chest, you know, because there may be somebody out there who's listening to this and needs to hear that, you know no, what I mean? For sure, for sure. Someone yeah. who may need to hear, you know, what we have to say and needs to hear, like, you know, something, you know, just someone, someone who doesn't feel like they have someone that they can relate to and, you know, they may stumble upon this and listen to this and be like, oh, crap. I'm not the only person going through this. I'm not the only person who's, you know, you know, I, I can actually relate. And there's a lot of people out there, you know, who go through something like that. And they just they, they just want to end their life. They feel like they have nothing to live for. You have something to live for. The mm-hmm. reason that you lost that person is to see if you'll be able to get through that, you know, get through that hump, get through that, you know, get through that bump in the road and become even better and you appreciate the people that you still do love in your life and appreciate what you have. Because like a lot of people... Like, a lot of people, you know, they deal with hardships, and they kind of just toss it over to the side. They kind of just give in to, like, you know, just being depressed and just not wanting to better themselves. And then their whole life is just, like, a huge just spiral. You know what I mean? It's just Mm -hmm. from one thing to another. You know what I mean? And it's kind of sad to see that, but then at the same time, it's up to you as a person. You know, it's up to you as a human being to decide... Am I going to sit here and just loathe in this shit? Or am I actually going to get up and be stronger from this? You know, ju- you know, just like you said, what well, makes... Yeah. No, um, 
They said when you're feeling when you're feeling tired, rest, don't quit. So many people get caught up on like a momentarily thing and then make permanent decisions. And I, I like that quote a lot because it's just like if you feel exhausted, you feel tired, you feel like you want to quit. No, just rest, and then you know tomorrow will come a new day. But no, that is that is true. That um, it's good to talk about things like this because um. I know there's, like, a lot of situations where people have been, like, you know, oh, well, just talking to this person, just knowing that they reached out, whatever, made the whole difference between them wanting to <clears throat> continue their life or not. So, yeah, and and I say, you can say if you agree as well, but if anybody hearing this and they feel like there's nobody else that they can reach out to, you can always hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Because I'm, I'm, you know, I, I talk to people all the time that I'll have no idea who the hell they are. But they'll be like, you know, I, I heard your music or I'm a fan of your music. And it's cool, like, because I'm, I'm not, like, famous or anything like that. I'm just, you know, just another person that wants to do music. But it's cool to see that just by me responding to them how much, like, it can make a difference. They'll be like, oh, man, thanks for, you know, taking the time out to respond to me and stuff a lot of people don't do that and it's fucked up to think about that that like something as simple as just talking to someone there's people out there that don't even have that so you know what's the craziest thing now that you mentioned that hmm. i remember seeing um someone you know how like you know people share memes on facebook and instagram sometimes yeah. but it wasn't a meme it was just a screenshot <laughs> someone had um messaged the guy who used to be on blues clues the original guy yeah. And, you know, they said to him, like, you know, you know, my childhood was shit, but, you know, just watching your show and, like, you know, just seeing you on TV every day, even though my life was horrible when I was a child, like, helped me get through everything. Yeah. And he actually, like, wrote them back saying, you know, like, oh, wow, man, thanks. I didn't really think that, like, you know, a little, you know, like a child show like that could help someone That's through dope. that. Yeah. And yeah. this was, like... Maybe, I think, last year or maybe in 2018, you know, when this person had messaged him. And he actually wrote back, which is crazy. That's the truest thing, and that's why I feel like people should just make more of an effort to just, I don't know, like, not, re not I don't know, just, just, just try, give an effort in life. Because I think people, people, a lot of people go through life, including myself sometimes, they may think that, Oh, uh, why would I bother responding? My input doesn't matter, or my my opinions, my thoughts don't matter that much. But your opinions, thoughts, and all this shit might make all the difference in somebody else's life. Like when you hear about, excuse me, when you hear about like random songs that people like to this day would just be like, "Oh man, that saved my life." Da -da -da. The person that wrote that probably didn't go into into making that song thinking I'm gonna save somebody's life doing this. They're just writing shit that comes to their mind. Same thing like with like Pac, like Dear Mama and and Keep Your Head Up and shit. It probably like Keep Your Head Up was definitely meant for for, for like, people you know, going through shit. Yeah. But but there's so million so many millions of other songs that it's like I see stories and people are just like, oh man, that song helped me get through it. Or this song saved my life. Like some like this dude, shout out to uh my dude Alex in uh Michigan. Yeah. And he was some random dude that messaged me uh on my twenty third birthday. And this was when my shit like wasn't even like mixed properly. Dude, I remember was... like back in the day, like you would write you would start to write a song that was meant to have like two verses or something like that. And it would just have one verse, and you never finished it. But now... No, no, no. That was because I would be waiting on people to get on songs, and people never did the shit. Like, that's that's why I had uh, Daniel that lives down here. He said that. He was like, man, he was, like, he was one of the only motherfuckers that was putting in work, because I would always write songs, and because my, my original plan was to... Every song that I did with a big name, get one of the homies on it. So that way everybody got shine, everybody got like like you know, like a big old like Wu Tang type click or whatever. But then I just the more and more time went on, the more I realized I was like people ain't really trying to they don't have like that work ethic. So that was why like a lot of the songs that went unfinished, it was cause people wasn't 
coming through and doing their verses like they said they would. But back to what I was talking about with old dude, he told me that, um, who's it? Me and Twisted Insane. He was like, man, you two, y'all's music got me off heroin, saved my life. And I was like, and this was like back then though, like before I made like, uh, walk the line and certain songs like that. And I was like, you know, back in that, in those times when I still lived here, a lot of my shit was just like, it didn't really have like deep meaning. It was just bars, like just rapidy rap. I'm just showing people that I have a lot of skill. And I was like, wow. And I have to this day, have stayed in contact with him because of that, because I was just like, my shit made a difference. Like my shit's not even like, number one, I'm not, I wasn't talking about as much back then. Number two, my shit wasn't even mixed properly. But number three, I'm like, my shit wasn't even getting views. My music wasn't even on uh, YouTube yet. My stuff was strictly on SoundCloud only. And it was when I would just upload, like you said, like random one verses and stuff. And dude, he told me that. He was like, bro, your music helped me. I got off heroin and shit. I was just like, it was dope. I mean, it was like a great feeling to be like, wow, that my shit made that much of a difference. But I just, I didn't see why it did. So I was just like, I don't have like... Now I do, I have a lot of deep songs, but back then I didn't really have that many that were like stuff that's, you know, positive, motivating, uplifting and shit. But that's why I say, I I truly think that like, they say like love's the most powerful thing, which in a way it can be, but I think music, music, music is the craziest shit. How you can go from, what does music start out as? A, an, an idea or a pen on a piece of paper in a computer, whatever. It's just, it's just thoughts. Yeah. And how far can you take it to? Stadiums, traveling the world, all that shit. And then to know to know when you see people selling out crowds for 150,000 people, 200,000 people performing at Lollapalooza and shit like that. And it's just like, wow, those songs they're performing, that, orig- that song started with just a, a fucking piece of paper and, you know, studio equipment. It's just crazy. That's why I always, I think music is is the dopest shit ever. So like, I'll never, like, I'll never forget when I first met you. Like, I always knew, and I don't know why, like, even though we talked on Facebook, which is the most weirdest fucking thing that we met on Facebook, but we, but even before we even met, we knew so many people, and I'm so surprised that we didn't meet beforehand, which is really fucking weird. For real. Shout out AJ and Kelby. Because <laughs> I, I knew them both. And Helena, I knew her. Dude, Helena, like, before you. I remember, like, I used to, like, kick it with, and I still talk to him. He's still my, you know, he's still a good friend. We just, you know. Him? Evan. Evan Hammonds. Oh, you didn't say a name. You just yeah, said well, I was just talking. Helena. I was trying to get it out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, okay, but uh, okay. I remember, like, I remember her friend. She was dating, you know, my friend Evan. And, like, you know, we were all. Who, uh, Autumn? I think that was her name. The yeah. Redhead? Yeah. I, mean, I used to talk to her, too. I remember her. Yeah, back in the day. And like, shout out to all y'all if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> that that was that was a long time ago. That oh, was like, like that was I, like 2000, 2009. I met I met you in twenty twelve. Yeah, that was a few years before. But me and him, we were cool ever since like Jesus Christ, man, since like elementary school. Because I met him, my buddy Griffin, and a whole bunch of other people, and like. You know, we had just been, we had always been friends, you know, just for the longest. We had always been friends. And, yeah. you know, Helena came over one time at my buddy Evan's house and we all just hung out. And then Boy, I, seeing, and seeing it's you, just so crazy. Me having that long ass straightened yeah, hair and then seeing me Justin. now, I'm so different. <laughs> but, you know, but you know what you though? Had that like, Justin Bieber I hair. still, I, like... I still fucking listen to like Blink 182. I still listen, I still listen to Avenged Sevenfold from time to time. I, still, I fuck with Avenged Sevenfold. I still listen to the music that I always used to listen to back in high school. Um, but it's just like for me. A Little like, Piece of Heaven and Nightmare are my two favorite songs by Avenged Sevenfold. You know what's really crazy? The original drummer for the band, he fucking died on Christmas. I remember he died. I didn't know he died on Christmas Day. If I'm, if I'm, you know, people are listening, and if you know for a fact, I'm pretty sure he died on Christmas, but if I'm wrong, you know, just correct me in the comment section, but I'm pretty sure he died either on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. One of those two. Because I remember I woke up and I was, you know, just, you know, just like on MySpace. Oh my what God. What year was that? MySpace. Jesus Christ. I remember the days of MySpace. Jesus. That's how I met my first girlfriend. I remember <laughs> my first MySpace. I think it was the only MySpace uh, I had. 
Shout out to who made it? Justin Amison made my first. Uh, who's also a friend of AJ, so you might have met him before. He made my first MySpace, and he was like, "This was before like phones, cell phones, anything like when I had one." And he was like, "Yo, there's this thing called MySpace, blah blah blah. You gotta check it out." He's like, "I went through and added some people for you," and I remember uh, my mom being like, uh, "You know, because like you don't want your." 13 year old kid on the internet or whatever 14 year old kid and she was like I don't know how I feel about you having like a, a whatever MySpace account it's funny MySpace and Facebook I didn't make mine for either one this uh the dude that made my Facebook is somebody I haven't talked to in 10 years I'm not gonna mention him but yeah I just remember that MySpace and Facebook I didn't make either one of mine it's funny I didn't even know that Facebook existed until my childhood friend Sidarius, he like came to visit, and yeah. like I didn't even like have any social media aside from MySpace, and yeah. it was so outdated. He was like, "What the like?" Oh, I know. What well, that's was was so funny is when I got like you look at Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, they're still popular today, right? It's been a good decade now. I got my MySpace in, I guess, oh six. By 2010, nobody was on MySpace. So, that shit only lasted like four years, you know? And I remember actually seeing on, uh, you know, Proof was on there for a little while, right? On MySpace? Yeah. I remember, because they said he was real interactive with fans. He was on uh, Rap Basement, this old, like, forum page. But, uh, yeah, it said it said that, because uh, it, it looks like it would be just a fan-made page. But it was really his. It says the last login was uh, April 11th, which was obviously was like the day that he died. And it, and uh, he had posted on somebody's page, what up, though? Like, I guess a few hours before he passed. Which is so weird. I'm like, the way that you can interact with famous people on Twitter and Instagram now, it's like, had MySpace stayed popular, who knows what that would have been like. Because MySpace was cool. You could do a lot more shit back, back in the day on there. How you can put songs on your profile and you can have the the background design and stuff. I remember the people that I was hanging with. <laughs> I look at it now, I'm like, they were a bunch of tools. But they used to do stuff like their backgrounds on their MySpace would be like Spongebob with a gun. Or, you know, just random shit like that. <laughs> but, um... Well, see, like, I remember, like, when I had a MySpace account, like, a lot of people had, like, fan base. You know, like a fan base page. Where they had, like, a certain, like, you know how you could have, like, a banner in the background, a profile picture, and shit like that? Yeah. And they would just, like, keep people up to date. You know, they would just keep people up I to remember date. Those. I remember those, yeah. You know, like I, like, I had one. My friend had one. You know, we all had one. We thought it was going to get us popular back in the day or, like, big or something, but it never By did. By making a fan page for, Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. For somebody that was, like, you know, for somebody that was, you know, like... Back then, for us, you know, we were really into, like, wrestling. Like, you know, like, WWE... So I had like a I actually Jeff, made a few myself, yeah. Yeah, I had like a Jeff Hardy fan page or like a fan base kind of thing, you know, where people can just come and talk about, you know, whatever. Yeah. And we would always, you know, my friend Evan, you know, he had uh he had one, but he had the best just because he had Photoshop. So like he was he was I'm pretty sure still to this day he still has Photoshop. He had, he, he had Photoshop back when MySpace was popping. Damn. Cuz yeah, no, everybody has Photoshop now, but Back, back in those like, days, like shit back wasn't then, as easy to. It wasn't to as have. easy. You you had camera act, phones were barely back then. Out. Back then, you had to actually buy it with the disc and put it into your computer and download the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. But now you. But now, if you have you know if you have Photoshop, you have to actually like pay for it every month. But he was lucky because he. I think to this day he still has the disc and he still has the same program and maybe the same computer. If not. He still has the disc, and he can still just download it for free because he actually owns the shit, which yeah. is crazy. Because like when you think about it, a lot of the things that we had back then and back then that was basically sort of kind of free that you would just buy one time and you could just use it forever. None of that exists now. Everything is so digital. Even I, I feel like well, I the f- coolest shit is to think about how hype people got over certain things and how they mean nothing now. Like for instance, camera phones. I remember when camera phones came out, people were making songs about that shit. Like, oh, my phone got a camera. And now phones are literally computers. It's a computer it's in your nothing. pocket. Yeah, and it's nothing. For, it's it's like, a computer in your pocket. Like, I always think about, like, what's going to be, like, 
what's what's the future gonna look like you know yeah. we've come so far in technology like when you like so quickly too yeah so quickly yeah it, it's it hasn't even been a hundred years i don't think they, so they went from for years and years cell phones were the same and now it's like every year shit is changing so much so quick yeah. so quick and it's crazy to think that way it's crazy to see it that way because you know Back in the day, like I'm talking about, like 80s, you know, maybe even early yeah, the 90s, they, they had to carry that shit. It was like phones. hooked up. <laughs> this it looked like a big box, and it was like this long string, and the phone was like attached to something. You know, you dial it. That was like their cell phone back then. But now you have Google on your phone. You have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. You you can download Netflix, Hulu. I feel like cable TV in the next, I would say the next 10 to 20 years. We're not even going to... I don't even have cable. All I use is just Hulu. It has everything yeah. I need. All the shows that I want to watch. All the shows that I keep up to date with. All the anime that I watch that I, I haven't was, even seen. I was seen. told in 2012 that in 10 years, so two years from now, radio will be completely gone. And yeah, it's like, you know, you look at um, Blockbuster. That shit doesn't even exist anymore. You remember Blockbuster? That was CD that was my shit back in the day. A lot of like Best Buy doesn't sell CDs anymore. Like they're making it to where you don't need movie places, the radio, like you said, like like cable television, anything because everything is just on the couple apps of like you know YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, whatever. And that's it. And it's crazy how it went from, like how things went from that to now. You know, you know the, uh, the first computer was like the size of this room. Yeah. That's crazy. If you look it up, look up like the first computer. It was huge. And now you look at, and it, you you got to think it, it couldn't do anything. That computer probably could, you could barely type on it. And this now you can, you got MacBook Airs and shit that do everything and they're small enough to you know fit on this in the side of your car door or something <clears throat> but yeah, yeah man like you know like i've always like thought about this you know because in a way it may sound kind of crazy but you know we've had so many movies you know, like i robot terminator you know things like that i really do believe that like somewhere along the line somewhere along the line maybe 50 years from now maybe 100 maybe a thousand years from now mm-hmm human beings will like find a way and i know it sounds crazy but that's just that's just how i, I just how i feel and how i look at it because how far we come in technology like you you see people who have been like in the military that have like lost a limb and then now they have like do you see that you see they got robot dogs now yeah that's crazy yeah oh they're talking about they're gonna replace uh police officers I was like, yeah, that sounds like the beginning of um, how people were saying, like, technology is going to be the end of the world. It's, it's what's going to kill us all, robots and shit. That sounds like the beginning of that happening. When when you got robot dogs replacing cops, and I seen somebody was like, oh, won't you just, just beat them up, whatever it is. Like, nah, these are robots are going to be, like, indestructible. Like, and, like, it's just, you know, and, like, you know, you know, seeing people who have, like, been in the military who have lost limbs, and then they have, like, these, you know, like, robotic limbs, and they can actually move their hands, you know, yep. and everything. Like, I really do, I really do believe, like, like, RoboCop. Do you know who RoboCop is? Yeah, of course. You know, he, like, it's just his head and his heart and, like, this machine, this robotic body that's keeping him alive. That's it. Yep. And I feel like, I feel like, at a, I feel like... You know, like I said, maybe a hundred years, maybe fifty, a hundred years from now, maybe even a thousand years. Who knows? Humans are gonna find a way to download themselves. You know, download their consciousness. You know, our because we're made of energy. We're not just made of flesh. When we die, our energy goes somewhere. You know, we're energy. Yeah, we're energy. So I feel like someone is gonna figure out a way to be able to take that energy and put it into like a mechanical body. To where we'll be probably, able to live a lot longer. Probably they got what was the shit I seen on TV about? They got um, scientists and shit doing stuff now where they take like the vocal cords of dead people 
and try to rub them together to see what the person's voice sounded like or some shit like that. Did you, did you see that clip on the news? And there was one that was like, they tried to do it with this person who had died and this was all they could get out of the out of the vocal cords being moved together. And you just hear like a deep voice go, fuck you or some shit like that. <laughs> and it's like, it's weird oh, that you're, you're sitting there and like, we're just like, human life like just normal humans as we are and they're sitting there doing all that stuff now like trying to clone us and you know like bring the voice back from somebody who's dead it's weird how how they continue to do shit like that well i just well i feel like you know i feel like humans are gonna find a way to keep themselves around longer than we should be you know because you gotta think like thousands and millions of years ago you know our ancestors they were just they were cavemen. They didn't. They weren't smart. They weren't really. You know, they were dying off. Eat. You know, they were just dying so quickly. You know, we didn't. We didn't. If you told someone back in the day, like around like, um, let's see, way back in the day, you know, people used to tell each other, you know, there's something called diseases and germs. Oh, Some, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't see it, but it could kill you. You back then would be deemed crazy, because just because you couldn't see it. I was always told just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't real. Yeah, you can't you, know? you can't see air, but it's there. Yeah. <laughs> like come on, you yeah. know. So it's just like, you know, with the whole concept of like I do believe that there's other life outside of Earth. I believe there's it may not be what we portray them as to be on TV, you know, like aliens, you know, these big ass fucking things with like a big head and a frail body. You you saying outside of Earth or after Earth? Outside of Earth, like okay. other planets that have been proven for the yeah. last couple of years that have living organisms on them. I've been, yeah, I've been. Life here. forms that are, you know, living. I've been hearing about, uh, you know, like they say that, that could exist. Yeah. It is like there's no way that this could be the only planet on Earth. Well, the only planet in this in our solar system. That has living beings on it. There has to be something else out there. And I do believe to an extent that our the technology that we have was given to us from something else. Yeah. To a certain... It's like when you look at history, when you look at everything, especially... I remember seeing this painting. It was like BC, before Christ. Mm -hmm. And it was like some guy... It was like a painting someone painted back way back in the day. And, you know, it was BC time, you know, before Christ. And it was a guy standing on a hill like this with his dog sitting next to him. A saucer in the background. But then also in the picture, it was like, you know, like a whole town of like, you know, like an ancient kind of looking town. Yeah. You know, like, you know, people, you know, like wagons and stuff like that. It was like really old times, you know, people dressed really differently type of shit. Oh, way of living, yeah. But it was like, it had, like, they had... They were dressed in a certain way that just, you know, it was just, it was, um, it was just really weird to see that because, like, that kind of just kind of tells me that, it just kind of tells me that people even back then knew that there was, you know, maybe different kinds of living organisms that we may have never seen there's been so many ufo sightings there have been so many people who have claimed to be abducted you know and i can't say that they're lying and i can't say that they're telling the truth because i have to experience it myself but i do remember this one movie that i saw i forgot the name of it but it was probably the most realistic depiction and the most in my opinion most terrifying like alien movie I ever saw. I forgot the name of it, but it was basically it was based off of a true story. This guy he was driving with you know him and his friends were driving in a car, and they saw like this giant. It looked like a spaceship just hovering, and like this beam of light was just you know beaming out. And one of them got out of the car and he got too close and he got beamed in there. And his friends left him and drove off. Went to the police, told the police they didn't believe him. They took lie detector tests. They all passed. They, they weren't lying. And their friend that they said that was taken by the air, you know, by the spacecraft, they found him a week later. It, but he was still alive. But he had no clothes. He was naked. They took him in for a lie detector test. He passed. He said that when he got abducted, they put him on this, like, operating table. 
and they just kind of like did experiments on him. They didn't harm him, you know. They just you know took some of his blood and all. Of, I forgot his name. I'll show you later after this. Did they this, say what the people looked like that took him? He said, and it's really it's really creepy and really kind of like scary, but he said that they had like kind of a big head, but it wasn't like what we depict them to be. Yeah. They had like these really like. They had eyes of like a shark, just black, like, and and he said uh, when they were looking at him, he felt like they were they were looking through his soul, like they could see his soul, like he felt like they were looking through his physical body and that they were like looking at his soul. It's weird as fuck. <laughs> and I remember watching um, Unsolved Mysteries, which is like one of my favorite shows ever since I watched that I watched ever since I was a kid. But mm-hmm. um, that shows the shit, even though. It used to always scare me as a kid. The music. Yeah, dude. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it was just so scary. I mean, I, dude, I, like, I remember, like, I was, like, on a, on a binge. I was, like, I was on a binge for the longest. But, um, there was this episode where these two guys that were, like, security guards, they were taking a break and they were outside and they saw Hey, it. on a side note, the people that be making the music for TV show theme songs, that's who I need to produce my shit. <laughs> the people that be making the music for, uh, TV shows... Movies, stuff like that. They got the best sounds, but my fault. No, you're not. You're good. Yeah, I agree. Like Unsolved Mysteries has like the best. After the original guy, the original dude, you know, the kind of the guy who was the original person who you know the host who uh, would talk over. He was the best. Mm-hmm. After that, I stopped watching it because the new guy. No offense to him, I just didn't like his voice. I didn't see that. a newer dude. Yeah, you talking he, about the older white dude that had a creepy ass voice. Yeah, 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 that's the only that's one a, I would watch that's because the only one I ever saw. it just like I don't know. It's just his voice and the music and just the way he would just tell the stories. Yeah. But I was watching one of them and it was like a specifically about aliens and UFO sightings and stuff. And these two security guards they were taking a break and um, they were outside just smoking a cigarette and they see a UFO. And um, you know the movie Men in Black. Yeah, there's actually people that are real like that. And the really creepy thing is, because they worked, I think, like, at a hotel or I think, like, a nursing home, something like that. Yeah. Um, about a day or two after they had reported the UFO sighting, these two guys dressed in all black suits with a top hat, with a briefcase, had no eyebrows, looked like twins, pale as shit, looked like twins, Walked into that same place that those two guys worked at and asked if they were there because they needed to speak to them. And the lady that was there, she told them that they weren't there because, you know, they were obviously off. But she wouldn't she wouldn't give uh, those two men the location, you know, like their address, you know, you know, the people who had worked that had reported seeing the UFO. She wouldn't give them, you know, she wouldn't give those two men the addresses, obviously. Yeah. But even she, which is really fucking creepy, she said that when she was talking to them that it felt like they were looking through her soul. Like, yeah. they looked exactly the same. Their voices sounded the same. They Every feature was exactly the same. And it's really weird because... Well, they even, sit there and wonder why, like, people in the world wonder why, if there is other life on other planets, why the government wouldn't tell us. Well, you know why they won't tell us. They, they tell us about a little less... Oh, virus going around and everybody loses their fucking minds. Uh, taking all the hand sanitizer and toilet paper out of stores and fighting each other and shit. You see the way people act on Black Friday, too. It's like, y'all act like this over stuff that has a discount on it. We're definitely not about to tell you about aliens, because then y'all gonna really blow some shit up. <laughs> They're like, gonna lose their fucking minds. The whole and world will dude, go crazy. I guarantee you, like, all the UFO sightings that we see... It's probably aliens just turning up, and they're like, "Let's just hey, let's just go fuck with them real quick." <laughs> and they literally come down, and they see how ridiculous we are, and they're like, "Man, yeah, they're, let's man, go back to Mars." Yeah, let's just let's just fucking go back home because they're they're just not ready to see us. They, if they're gonna be, in that's a really good point you bring up though. Like Black Friday, people people have been killed on Black. Dude, Friday. there's so many things. It's not just Black Friday or the virus. See how people act during ball games as well during certain concerts. Any type of event that a big crowd can gather or anything that makes people panic, it's always some bullshit. It's always gonna gonna be chaos and, and shit. Destruction like that. and people remember, losing their lives. You know, shout out to 
our hometown, but y'all some crazy motherfuckers. Um, when we won in 2012, when UK won the um, championship, we news because everybody was on State Street um, burning the couches and, you know, setting shit on fire. Bitches flashing titties left and right. Like, Kentucky... Not Kentucky, but you know, just the world as a whole. Humans are are some wild motherfuckers. I remember, I remember people, bro. People were throwing fucking couches out their windows, setting cars on fire, flipping yeah, random all types of shit, like over a win. Over like, a win, yeah. What? No, what's even more savage is they be doing this shit when they lose. <laughs> Whether win or lose, just give us an excuse to to go crazy and we on it. <laughs> well, then what's the point? Like if we're like if you're gonna destroy shit, whether we win they or just lose, want an excuse to to tear shit up. I'd be damned if like, I think the only thing or my fault. Go ahead. I'd be damned like if I woke up the next morning and I had to be at work and my car was flipped over on fire. Boy, <laughs> I would listen. You peek I would, out the window. You're like, uh, crazy kids go to no. bed wake up my car's flipped over what the fuck and it's on fire like <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing yeah, that trips me out though like they were like throwing couches out their windows from their dorms wow like shit. who the fuck is gonna pay for that and then and then they bitch about the next day man we ain't got no furniture you just fucking threw it out the window <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right right it's like you were living in the moment when i said to live in the moment i didn't mean to throw your fucking couch out the window and set someone's car on fire like that's some purge shit real shit and I just feel like, I just feel like, you know, people, and I think this is something that everybody should learn from and like should take advice from me or anyone who, who's been in that, like, don't let your emotions get the best of you. Like people, people act on emotions. They don't, people will be pissed off, say some shit that they don't mean to someone that they really care about and they'll fuck up the whole relationship or friendship or, you know, girlfriends, you know, a relationship with a girlfriend or a relationship with a boyfriend and or it, or fuck up their life, or you know, or, lose all, a really good job just because they let their emotions get to them, or end up in jail for thirty. I years feel or. like I feel like we've all been there. We've all let our emotions get to us, and we fucked up maybe a re- friendship course, or a relationship, no question, and we've man. all learned from that. But it's like I feel like letting uh, our emotions, in my opinion, in a certain way and at a certain time, I feel like our emotions are our worst enemy because. True. In they that moment, be, they can't be for sure. Yeah, in that moment of like anger, or you know, or like sadness, or like you know, just like being fed up with something, whatever comes to mind, we just say it. But then later on, we regret it. We're like, damn, I shouldn't have said that. You know, that's why I always say, even if you're not cool with somebody, even if like you know you fell out with someone, just make amends, forgive them, but you don't have to be cool with them. At least just, for sure. and it's and it's not forgiving them just to forgive them but it's for yourself you know if you sit there and just like not forgive someone no matter what the reason is or no matter what they did to you that shit will eat you every day and you're going to start being more hateful more bitter because you don't want you know your last convo with anybody to be bad unless it's like you know somebody that really really did some 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 terrible some shit, shit towards you or your family then it's like fuck you in your life like but yeah no that's that's definitely and i've done it i know almost i think every person i know has done it if i'm not mistaken like we all have does it, yeah. we all have we all have i mean shit like even me you know it, it didn't ruin it didn't ruin my relationship with my dad but like you know when we got into arguments I said some shit I didn't mean he did too, but we were man enough to apologize and move on. Yeah. And that's just, I feel like that's what you should do. Even even if it's with someone that's like done you really wrong, you should just forgive them and just mm, move on. But it depends though. Like there's, you know, it, I done saw, me wrong in what way? Because that's, that, that's such a broad scale of things that it could be. Some stuff forgivable, some stuff isn't. Like if you, if you let a, friend hang out in your house and you come home and they stole all your parents jewelry and stole a bunch of shit like that that's the, the uh, one of the highest forms of disrespect in my opinion and oh of course you need to beat that ass but of course but i remember watching um the brother of that one guy who got killed when the cop came into his house and thought that it was her place and she shot him dead 
like I saw the video where like he was in court, you know, for her hearing. I think she got like ten years or maybe a little bit longer. But I remember like his brother like forgave her and hugged her and everything. And Man, I feel and Sheep's dad hugged his killer. That shit was wild. That's I don't like. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think. It. I don't think I could ever do that. But to be honest, though, it takes it takes a really strong person to do that. Beyond strong, yeah. I don't think. I don't. I don't think that he did that for that person. I think he did it for himself. Because if you think about it, like, well, he did it because he's really religious his, his, too. His faith is obviously pure, really strong, and. It wasn't. He wasn't willing to look at that guy as just like, oh, you're an evil person. He probably is the type that thinks everybody is good, and just bad got into him because he because he said he goes, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the devil. The the devil that got into you or some shit like that. Yeah, and he's just his sheep's sheep's his dad is a very wise man, and I see why sheep's was who he was. I never met his dad, but I knew his brother because he was in my creative writing class. Mm-hmm. Such a good dude. Like, I remember well, Sheeps. Uh, uh, y'all both went to Crete? Yeah, 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 yeah. He even, dude, like, him and Sheeps would, like, go to, um, they would, they would come to the library and help me with my Play-Doh because I was failing and they would help me. And You think AJ and Kelby and all them knew him? Um, or no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Because sure. they never mentioned him, so maybe they did know him and they didn't know that we knew him, but I don't know. Who knows? But I'll he, never... he was a true. He was a. He was a good dude. He was a gentleman. The first time I ever heard him cuss was after he died on a song. I had never even heard him cuss, and I had never heard him have malicious intent towards anyone. He was never, such a good never dude, even bro. heard him like get such mad. a good dude. He was. Sheeps was that dude. And he was like so, he was like so into his faith, you know. He even like rapped about it in some songs, you know. Like he was yeah. a very peaceful boy. That shit fucks me up, though. That uh, you know how the way he went out, yeah. And he rapped about it in a song where something something about nightmares of people breaking in and stabbing me, and I was like, and he basically like he kind of predicted the way he was going to go out, but. He that, said it the same way. The outcome him going was the, out same. the same way, and I was just like, "That's why I always I believe in the power of the pen." And anytime I get worried about shit like that, like people will hear in in so many songs where I'm like, "I'm never dying. I'm I'm living a thousand years." I'm just like, because people look, look at um Jesus. There's so many people that did that shit. X Pac Big Proof. So many people. I think uh. Left Eye did too, and then many others as well. So many people mentioned their death in songs and then died. And I'm just like, I feel like you just put it out there when you write that shit down or you say that, rap that shit, sing that shit, anything. I feel like you're putting it out there. And it's just like, mm mm I'd rather say, nope, I'm never dying. Yeah, mm-hmm. when he died, that was so unexpected. Which one? Who? Sheeps. Oh, she- yeah. Because yeah. I was just. Like, I was down, I, like, I was in my room just hanging out, and I'll never forget, because, like, when he would come to my creative writing class, because his brother, Nerdine, was in my class, yeah. um, I remember, he, dude, he, ra- like, he literally rapped, like, two or three songs in our creative writing class. I remember seeing a video of him, yeah, he, he did He killed a, it, uh, he killed it. He did a song over the beat to, uh, uh, Turn It Up by Chameleonaire. I'm and, gonna show him how to get your shine on. Turn it up the DJ playing my song. You know the song? I'm going to show him how to get the club crawl. <laughs> he used that beat. And I remember uh, him and... Was it him and his brother or just him? I think it may have just been him. Because he like... He did an entire song. Like two, three verses, a hook, and everything over that beat. But I'll never forget and like... it was like something that, that related to school though. But he did it in like a cool way. Yeah, like I remember <laughs> I met his brother. And like I didn't know that that was his brother. Yeah. And then, like, back then, you know, I like, I, I knew you back then. I knew you and Torres. This was, like, senior year high school before I graduated. And it was, like, one of my... I remember your graduation. Yeah. It was... And, dude, he was there. Him and Torres. Sheeps was there? Yeah. I, I saw. Just I, remember I, that I, I saw him. But I, I know I know that uh, Torres was there. Cause I, I saw him. Torres was there, but I didn't get a picture with Sheeps because he was taking pictures with his brother and his family. Uh, and so I just dapped it up with him because my mom and dad and sister and brother wanted pictures Because you know there's that one stuff. picture of like me, you, 
Elliot. Elliot. There's one where Nadia's in the background, Torres is more appearing. He's like holding up a pin. There was a bunch of pictures taken from that day. Yeah, was, dude. Like it. I'll never forget that shit. But I remember he came into class. Like I, uh, he came into class. He rapped, you know, all that, and the nerding introduced me to him. And I was like, "Oh shit, I know your brother." And yeah. it was just like he was so polite. You know, he was just such a good mannered person. He was so nice. Even if your shit sucked, he didn't tell you. He would just give you advice. You know. Yeah. That was, like, around the time I was trying to, like, yeah, rap yeah, and stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've and always like, been that way. I'm never just, like, your shit's whack or your shit's dope. Because, I'm never like that. Because, first of all, that's just, like, an opinion. Without explaining it, it's just kind of, like, uh, it's not really, like, a thorough explanation. Like, specify. Oh, I like the flow, but the beat's whack. Or, like, like really break it down. And so that's why I've actually always kind of felt like that's people that haven't even listened if they're just like oh yeah dope bro i'm like yeah you probably didn't even listen to it but when people be like oh well you said this on this part of the song or or when you did this part of the, with the flow and i love how you switched the beat here like that's how i know when people have really listened and that shit you know but it was just cool to like it was just really cool and interesting to like just see him just rap so comfortably yeah. In front of a class of people he didn't even fucking know aside from his brother and me. It was because he had, he had the passion for this shit for sure. He he definitely, he loved it like I do. He, he studied this shit front to back. He was, he was definitely a student of the game of hip hop. I always like, I always ask myself, like when I think about him, I always ask myself why. Yeah. For why, real, like, for real. Why is it always... Shout out to uh, Atmosphere, by the way, the rapper Atmosphere, who was one of Sheep's favorites. He, he's on uh, Rhyme Sayers. It's like more of like the... You ever heard of the rapper like Idea? Or mm. is it more like Boom Bap alternative rap? I think is what they call it. I don't really... Put, well, like, what is it like? Shit, rap and rock kind it's of? Just, it's like backpack rap. It's just that very like... Lyrical stuff? Lyric, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, just, and the rapper Atmosphere, I sent him a video of Sheep's. Doing Isn't, a song over one of Atmosphere's beats, and I was like, "This is my homie that died a few years ago." Just thought you'd want to see this, da, da, da. and he actually hit me back. That's why I say shout out to him for taking the time to respond to this. Was he had said, and he was just like, "Oh, that's dope, blah blah blah, whatever." Sorry for your loss, and I was like, "That's cool," because he didn't have to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. That was probably aside from like everyone else that we've lost over the years, you know, especially recently, and you know, my dad two years ago. Like, man, like. I was just chilling in my room like it was any other day, talking to Torres and talking to Chef Key. Next, next thing I know, when I'm I think on I was Facebook, talking to him. To, who, how did you find out? You I, just, I, just, I just saw it on Facebook. R.I.P. Sheeplocks. I was like, what the fuck? Who 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 had posted it first that you saw? I think it was either Torres or Chef Key because they because they because Chef Key and Torres were really close with him too. They were they yeah. were cool with him. Torres was the one that told me. I remember I, was, I saw that and I, was I didn't happy believe it. Shit that day too because I didn't like I didn't believe it at first when I saw it. I was like, this this must I be some kind of fucking got... prank or something. But yeah, no, yeah. But it's it's crazy because the day that he died, he was buried because that's you know that's how that shit was whack. I completely missed the the wake funeral whatever whatever. I missed that entire thing. That's just like I thought we had time. And I remember asking Chef Gee and I was like. I was like, uh, what time is it, whatever that the wake is, or what day are they doing the funeral? And it was like, you know, a couple hours after we had found out that he even passed. And he goes, oh, he's already buried, bro. I was like, what? Yeah, that's what... what fuck? That's but the... Then uh, I forget that it's that... It's the Muslim. The Muslim heritage. Yeah, that's they just... Bury that, that's just quick. They bury them, like, once they die. You know, they don't... Like, they don't want to wait. I don't, like... I don't know 100% why it's like that, but I just remember, I was like... You know, I asked Torres, I think I asked Shecky, I was like, damn, when's his funeral? And they were like, bro, he's already buried. I was like, "What? Yeah. That quick?" Like, I, it sucks. It's just crazy. I remember that day. I was my I don't mom. Remember exactly what I was doing. But my I mom even liked him because yeah. she she met him a couple of times. Met his my brother Nardine, and my mom really wanted to like. Well, take... he had, there was there was not a single reason that no matter what walk of life you came from, what type of people you like to hang with, there was not a single reason in the world that anybody wouldn't like him or or. There's not a reason that anybody would dislike him because he's he was just a cool ass dude. He was just like he was just like an honest, humble. Even if you were like a bad person, you know, like if he just you, didn't judge. He, he didn't, did. He didn't judge. He didn't like he was fuck, just like a good he, fucking guy, man. And just yeah. 
the fact that like he went out the way that he went out was just so pathetic and just so fucked up in my yeah. opinion but i think that's one that's the only thing that can really make losing someone worse is if it's the way they went out if they went out in a real like like foul way that's what's even worse because it's like you know it's one thing for people to go naturally or go from like freak accidents but when you know it's just like damn this person's such a dope person and somebody really was willing to cause them harm it's just, that's just so was fun. really willing to cause someone that they didn't even know that was just doing their job. You know, mm-hmm. just bringing a pizza that someone had ordered, and then you know they they did what they did. It was so fucked up. I remember that day though. I don't know. I don't remember what I was doing. I just remember I was just happy as shit for some reason. I was just happy, and and then you got the news and it fucked up your whole mood. No, I was just kind of like, what? Like, yeah. He's like, she died, and I was like, ah, surely I read that wrong. Whatever. I'll ask him again. Look what he's talking about. And he, was, he started explaining it, and I was just like, "Word," but that was just crazy to me. It was just, it was just unbelievable. Like, man, I hope they do something with that movie of his. He had that movie he was working on. That shit was dope. It was like a little, like a little short film or something. Yeah, I hope his brothers like took over that and just tried to. Whoever it. got that footage, I know somebody else. Yeah, I hope they finish that shit. Same thing with my uncle. There's he. My mom got a book of his somewhere. That he had wrote. I don't remember what it's about, but it's like a couple hundred pages. I was like, man, finish that shit and and any money it makes, send it to like, you know, like a suicide awareness thing or some shit like that. Or just send it to kids, whatever. But I, I feel like when people work on shit like that, like if, when people have work and it's not finished, you should still put it out in, in memory of them and out of respect for them. But that's one thing that I hate is when people like, like Tupac, he had he had a lot of fake albums, like albums that people had to go and put their hand in and then release it. I think when when people leave this earth and they have any type of art that was left behind, like music, movies, paintings, whatever, just leave it as it is and put it out. Maybe, maybe like like tweak one little thing here and there, like if if the verse isn't finished or some shit like that then yeah cool but when when people take any type of work from somebody that passed and then start tweaking it to the point that it's not even really theirs anymore that's just whack to me that's why i've never really been a fan of uh albums like that because they you know they did it with pop smoke they did it with juice world and it's like yeah it's cool i but you know like the real reason behind why they do it is just to make it like a quick buck or whatever and it's just yeah. like let I can't, leave their legacy alone. I can't lie. Like some of the Tupac ones are really good, especially the one that Eminem did. The only two that I really liked was that one, Loyal to the Game, and uh, Better Days, which Better Days was one of like the first rap CDs I ever owned. Next, next to um, Biggie's Life After Death, LL Cool J's uh, G O A T. Little Bow Wow's <laughs> first two albums. Little, do you do you remember that show that he used to have back in the day? That little Bow Wow had a show. It was either dang who was it? I think it was uh, no oh, Little Romeo. Romeo, yeah, Romeo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I always get them mixed up. I don't know why because that more like because it. they were kids. You know what I'm saying? They were. Kids. I never saw it, but the reason why I knew you were talking about Romeo was that family. They've done everything. Uh, Master P, which obviously you know that's his. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. his dad. Yeah, that's his dad. They got their own cereal now. That's crazy, bro. This man... Can you imagine? Dude, he did was, everything. He was a he, rapper. Think, he was a basketball player. He yeah. was an actor. Like, he did everything. Think, I'm pretty sure he's, he's like, been a professional chef. He's made, like, books and shit. That, that man... the author of... That man Master can P literally... all. That man can literally die saying, I've done everything. Facts. <laughs> without Facts. even... Without even having to prove it, because everyone knows he's done everything. He's not 60... Even and, and he, you know what's crazy? Has lived more life by the time he was thirty than some motherfuckers will living to be the craziest thing. Like, like the know. craziest thing to me is like he accomplished so he accomplished so much in his life in like so little time. If that makes any sense, like yeah, so he did so much. Well, he's the goat. He's the blueprint. Well, no, no, no. I take that back. I think E forty was doing it independently before him, but. If not, then whatever. Master P and... Yeah, Master P was either the first or the second 
rapper to do shit independently, which means he wasn't getting no TV push, no movie push, whatever. So, like, when, like, Tech Nine's label and ICP's label and all these other labels that got big from doing it independently, it's cool, but it's like, nah, that's where it started, was was E-40 and Master P. They were the first ones to do it. And what was, what was something that was harder for them, which is even more of a salute, is, you know how it's so easy now, you just post something on the internet and motherfuckers can hear about you? They didn't have the internet. So Master P and E-40 were going platinum just by word of mouth, getting out there in the streets and pushing posters, selling CDs out the trunk with no help from the internet, no help from TV, none of that shit, no help from the radio. And then they eventually, you know, blew the fuck up to who they are now. But to know that it was that far back, yeah, Master P is is the go-to guy to model yourself after when it's like, hmm. What famous person would I want to be like him? He did it all. He did it all. And then not, you know, little side note, but I mean, like, he also was like a big time drug dealer too, but that's not, like, you know, something. That's like in the past. That's not something to glorify, yeah. I mean, he, he, I mean. He he was a, what do you say, rapper, actor. Chef. Chef. Basketball player. Professional ball player. Yep. (laughs) Anybody could just be like a little ball player in high school, but yeah, he went pro with the shit. Um, Isn't that insane though? He he, he was own, a pro in all of this. He had his own clothing line. Golly. He had his own, I think, film company, TV show, and then and then uh, like we're saying now, he's got his own cereal. Like, dude is dude, and it, it, it's called Hootie Hoos. You don't really know his music like that, so you don't get like yeah. the relevance to that. But he had a group called True, T R U, and that was one of their big songs. Was called Hootie Hoo. And so his cereal is called Hootie Hoos, if I'm not mistaken. Like I just, but, like I just, I just, I just remember watching the shit out of the the Lil Romeo show. Like I love yeah, that I'm show. The, see, as much as I am up on rap, I never saw that, and I never saw um, Under Three Thousand show either. Class of Three Thousand. Mm-hmm. I want. I gotta see. I never. I mean, I never saw it either. So I mean, you're not the only one. The only one that I really stayed in, like, in tune with, was a uh, Three Sixes show. But they only had like eight episodes, and then MTV didn't want to renew it or some shit. But I, I, I'll never forget when that shit uh, hit the uh, airwaves, or hit hit the air, or whatever. I still watch those episodes all the time. <clears throat> yeah, it's like man, like when I look back on my childhood, it's like there's so many good shows that I watched when I was a kid. And then, like, nowadays, they're just trying to remake those same shows. Like, yep. I hate... Man, TV shows and movies and It's music. just not the same Don't as it used to It's just not the yeah. same. <laughs> yeah. Some the shit was cooler back then. The 90s and the early 2000s was, like, the best era for, like, music, shows, t- movies. It's just, like... So, it, there was, like, so from much... life. Yeah. Life it was just so movies. much creativity that was coming out. And now it's just like just a remake of this, remake of that, remake of this. Remake. It's just like mm-hmm. you can't come up with your own idea. You have to take someone else's idea and try to turn it into your own. That's true. I've seen the thing in the last like year or two. And they were like, you know, obviously doing remakes of a bunch of movies. But it was a picture of a movie theater and all the movies that were playing that week. And... It was all 90 shit, but the picture was taken in like 20, 2019, 2018, some shit like in the last couple of years. And somebody was saying that they were like, what the fuck are we living in the 90s again? Like, <laughs> and then you find out like all these old groups were starting to come back to like old music groups. It's just weird how, how uh, history repeats itself. And that and that's what, uh, <sighs> excuse me, that's what people be saying too. They're just like, man. Because, I mean, I don't feel like I have to be subjected to one style, like I'm only like a 90s rapper or whatever. I feel like I can do any style, no matter how music continues to change, I can do that. But clearly, obviously, I guess my most, where I'm most comfortable at is doing like just the lyrical stuff, like being being a lyricist. And that's not what's in right now. It's not It's not what's popular and accepted. And people have always said it. They're like, man... You just gotta wait till that like '90s, early 2000s vibe is like in style again, because you know everything repeats itself. And they was like, "Man, you gonna blow up?" Because I've had people tell me that too. They're like, "Man, with the music you make, if you had popped in 
2005, whatever, you would have been one of the biggest things ever. But I was also, you know, 13 years old when I was in 2005. So I had a little pipsqueak ass voice. So it just, it wasn't meant to happen. But I don't feel like I'm like that. Like, I don't feel like I am just a 90s rapper or 2000s rapper because I think I, I keep my ear on what's popular, I hate to use quotes. I keep my ear to the streets. Like I do, I, I stay in tune with like all the brand new songs that are hitting number one on iTunes and and all over the radio. I sit there and I study them because I'm always like, I can always change every song that I do. I can always change it up, and that's why I went from just doing songs like Case Closed and Loose Lips. I went from- which is my two favorite songs, by the way. <laughs> Cause that's just Cause like you, cause that's you like just, bar shit. You just no, fucking went in. Just bars. You just fucking went and in. Then, like, yeah, like I remember one of those two. We were listening to the Marshall Mathers LP two, and yeah, you I, fucking I you fucking wrote one of those songs. Lips. Yeah, loose after, after you heard Groundhog Day, inspired by Marshall Mathers LP two. Yeah, Groundhog Day. Because I remember yeah. you heard that song. You were like, I got, I got to fucking write, and you wrote that whole thing. Literally, I remember I had my desk over here with my computer. My yep. bed was like right here. I'll never forget you fucking wrote that whole ass verse. It was just a I remix of um Ti's "Hit 'Em Up" or something. No, it, oh, it hurt. went yeah, hurt. T. I, well, I love Ti. I can't talk "Hit 'Em Up." No, 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 that's too bad. No, I'm hurt. tripping. Yeah. But it was hurt. You were you wrote the whole shit in my house on my bed. And you just I put never, the notebook down and I never kept that verse. That sucks because I remember that. Shit that was, was a dope fire. verse. That was a good. I just verse. remember going through it like I've done with so many others. I was like, ah, oh, let's look for the best lyrics in here wrote them down on a sheet. I was like, oh, I'll use these again on something else. But that verse itself to that beat, I never kept it. It was, it was so stupid because that shit was fire. But, <clears throat> but I mean, you know, I went from, I went from doing shit like Case Closed and Loose Lips, which I can always still go back and do because it's just bars. But if you listen to like my new shit, I got songs like My Lonely off of my latest mixtape. Or don't know me, or you know, just songs like that where I'm not even rapping on this shit. The whole thing is is just like sung, but it's but it's because I hear that you know you can't sell a record nowadays without some type of melody in it, and that's why I always say Bone Thugs was the most. When people say oh, I was ahead of my time, Bone Thugs was the most ahead of their time as people. I besides, love Bone Thugs. Besides Three Six Two, because I love Bone Thugs. What was yeah. that one song with Akon? Oh, I tried. Oh my god. Yeah. That's so like two thousands. That's two thousands though, but you gotta think they came out in like and it's still... ninety four. I think mm-hmm. their first shit was like creeping on to come up ninety four. They're over here doing this melodic ass, you know, even though I say it's it's the Lord infamous flow. He really was doing that at first. But they're doing that fast and singing and shit when the only thing that was out at the time was like Big, you know, like Illmatic dropped the same year, so it's like Bone Thugs was way ahead of their times. Nas is making shit like that, or Big L's making music like he was doing, and Snoop was making shit like he was doing, and Bone Thugs is over here in Little Ass Cleveland doing this, this just like futuristic ass flow that to this day, Migos and all of them be trying to do shit like that. Like that's why I always, I've always said like. Bone Thugs, Bone Thugs, three six, because I mean, it's it's not even like a debate. All the beats nowadays, all the production and shit, everybody's that's that's a DJ Paul beat. That's you know, everybody's got just, got that that trap sound that he started. It's just something about it's just something about Bone Thugs that I just I love so much. It's I don't know if it's just the way that they make their music but it's just like that song they're the shit just, i remember watching something on bro i'll never forget when we, when we went to go see snoop who was there from bone thugs it was somebody we didn't expect to be there who was it was it crazy bone oh no it was, it was the fact that it was all five of them oh they were all there yeah which is something you like never see yeah no because it was, was crazy. it was snoop and i had i had it's weird because it was on that big ass Rupp Arena sold out stadium and I had seen them a few months prior on um, this little stage at a base camp where I ended up uh, opening for Twista around the same time but 
Yeah, no, the, it was it was all of Bone, and that's what was so dope is because they were, I guess, known for, or they are known for not having all five at a show. It's usually four or maybe down to three or maybe even two, but yeah, it was dope because it was all five, and yeah, that, sh- that show was a shit. It was Snoop Dogg, Warren G., there's so many people at that show. Yeah, but um, I had fun doing this, man. Ah, <laughs> you know I gotta be up early in the morning, but we've been on here for like almost two hours. Jesus, yeah, for real? Yeah, it's like let me look. About an hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and twenty five, twenty six minutes. But shit. yeah, man, like. Shit, you want, you're gonna you're gonna be on more of these. You know what I mean? This is like the first official podcast. In okay. the future, you know, I'll have cameras and you know it'll look more official, maybe like better audio. But you know, yeah, because I think all the interviews that I've done so far have uh, only been audio, which is like fine. With you Just, with you know, other people, you know, which is fine for like a beginning kind of thing. But like later on, when I get you know when I when I'm you know when I have more money, I can get better equipment. But this is fun, you know, I like having, I like having a good conversation, talking about deep shit, you know, like we did, you know, even your music, you know, we talked about that, we talked about a lot of things yeah. that I feel like some people need to hear and probably should hear and probably should take into consideration of maybe, maybe somebody's going to hear this and be like, well, damn, my life isn't as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, for sure. They may have lost a grandparent or maybe a parent and been like, well, damn, I've, I've lost one person, my whole life is over, and they listen to us, we've lost like four or five people. Within our lifetime that we cared Four so much five. about. I don't know, lost like thirty, but Jesus <laughs> I lost Christ. I lost a lot of people. If you listen to That's more than me. If you listen to my speaking of Master P, my Bout It Bout It Lextown mix, shout out a lot of people on that song that have passed away. And then also Brad, who was a close family friend. Yeah. And then Avery recently and there's a lot of people. A lot of people have passed, but yeah, that's somebody. That's why I say you just gotta. Yeah, that's somebody I'm gonna plan. have to go see before you leave too. Every site, yeah. Yeah, I haven't been. I mean, we went to my dad's today in JP's. That was the first time I ever went to JP's. We can go tomorrow. They close at uh five. Yeah, I get off at like two thirty, so we can definitely do that. But but yeah, man, I had fun. You know, if you guys want to. Follow Trace Arland. His Instagram and Facebook is. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can you can find me on anything by just typing in T R E S, and then my last name is A U R L A N D. There's not anybody else in the world that has my name, so it will pop up immediately. But I'm Trace Arland on everything except Instagram, which is the real Trace Arland. Because for some reason, I don't know if somebody tried to like take my name or what, but it doesn't allow me to change my name to just you know Trace Arlen. So I have to do the real. But and then which there's is, like another page on there. It's like Arlen dot Trace. So I'm like, which is know. probably good that you have you know like the real Trace Arlen because there's a lot of people that try to like make fake accounts just to get that's followers. What, yeah, that's what I'm like saying. That. If if people, especially if people ever start making like fan pages and shit in the future. I want people to be able to know that, you know, that's where my shit is. But I got all my stuff on, um, I got all my mixtapes and EPs on Dat Piff right now. I got the, uh, the album Triumph finally coming. I've been working on this shit for almost three years. Um, definitely, just like with Spotify, all you gotta do is download the app and all the music's there. People always be wondering, man, you should put your stuff on Spotify, da 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 well, well, this is just mixtape shit, and I don't own the beats to them, or the rights to the beats. So that's why my shit's just for free on Dat Piff. But download the Dat Piff app, look up my name on there, Trace Arland, and all my shit pops up. All the Lost Files series, the Lightwork Trilogy, Can I Borrow Your Beat mixtape, the Three Times Hot EP, Bonus Tracks EP, the if the music's too loud mixtape, all that shit's on there, and um, yeah, just follow follow me on everything, and look out for new shit because I got a lot a lot of projects in the works. And you have a lot of famous features. <laughs> 
I hear oh about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Which we're not going to get into because that's just you know you're going to have to go it's and a listen surprise. to his music. And yes, it's going to be a huge surprise. It's a surprise. The features is crazy. Yeah, it is. I saw like you sent me most of the names and you know the songs without their verses because they haven't sent you the verses yet. But it's going to be crazy. But um, you know, uh, thank you guys for actually listening. And you know, hopefully, hopefully some of you guys take something away from this. You know, um, hopefully something positive and not negative, and yeah, um, hope you guys have a great day, and as always, 